In this video, I'm going to talk about a class of passive components called ferrites. Ferrites. And ferrites are a non-conductive ceramic that uh, also happens to be ferromagnetic. And other materials can be ferromagnetic, such as iron, but typically uh, those kinds of materials are not used in printed circuit boards. Why are ferrites used? Well, first let's discuss how the geometry of a ferrite. You have a wire passing through the ferrite material, the ferrite material here, this is the ceramic, let me draw it in, there's the ceramic, and what that looks like at low frequencies is just a DC short, but as you go up and up in frequencies you'll see impedance increase. That's effectively like having an inductor, but you don't have to have any coils of wire, so it works very well with integrating them into printed circuit boards. Why do you use ceramics? instead of iron? Well, it has to do with the circulating currents that would occur in iron, the eddy currents, and uh, if you used iron, you would have heating losses due to that, whereas if you use ceramic, it's insulating, so you don't have that. Now, the circuit, uh, the schematic symbol for a ferrite is this. It's a diagonally shaped, diagonally facing box, and that's what you would plug into your schematic. Here I've drawn a surface mount component. Um, there's one terminal, there's another terminal, and the ferrite would be the material in between. And I've actually gone in and measured a surface mount component between this terminal and this terminal, and I find at DC, with a multimeter, it's about 0.25 ohms. Let's take that information and feed it into this impedance plot, where I have impedance on the y-axis and the log of frequency on the x-axis. So. At DC, all the way down here, it would, well, let me change colors, it would be, look something like this. And as you go up in frequency, it would tend to increase, 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 increase. And you'll see the most dramatic changes start to happen at around 10 megahertz. And that's where ferrites are most useful, for frequencies above 10 megahertz. They can suppress low, uh, high frequency oscillations, they can act as chokes to keep high frequency signals from making their way into other parts of the circuit and are generally very useful for those kinds of purposes. Let me walk through three examples of how you might use ferrites. First, I have this circuit here where we have a single power line that may be, say, 5 volts, and we have a ground. And that 5 volts and ground is being used to power two circuits. One is this load down here, and let's assume for instance, that it has some very sensitive analog electronics. Also, that 5-volt and ground line are being used to supply a high-frequency oscillating circuit. And we really don't want this high-frequency oscillating circuit to interfere with the load down here. So what you do is, on the 5-volt line, you put a ferrite bead, a ferrite bead, ferrite bead, in the circuit to keep the high-frequency stuff away from the circuit because if the high frequency uh, signals try to find their way to that load they're going to see a high impedance here and be stopped. It's a choke. The second example I have is a uh, logic gate with very fast transitions here uh, that will interface to a following stage of logic gates. Uh, we don't want the very fast transitions to interfere with the second logic gate, but we do want the low, lower frequency or, or relatively DC states to, to feed through. So we put that ferrite bead in the middle there. How is the voltage at the load going to look as a function of time? If you did not have the ferrite bead in there, it would look something like this, or it might look something like this. Maybe it comes up and oscillates back and forth and finds its way to some steady state value. If you had the ferrite bead in there, it tends to damp that oscillation, so you'll have something more like this. And that can be good. There's no ringing in your circuit, or less ringing if you use a ferrite bead. The third and final example I'm going to walk through is uh, the example of a motor controller, a motor controller controlling a servo motor. And servo motors can have a lot of some, some pretty uh, substantial magnetic fields. They can have uh, higher frequency noise components and you don't for instance want that to feed back through the motor control to the motor controller or to other sensitive circuitry so you might put a ferrite bead on both terminals that are being used to feed power to the servo motor